Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> There's nothing like beautiful music to soothe our soul early on a Sunday morning. We appreciate that very much. Good morning and welcome to Worship Virtually with Bethany Christian Church. We are glad that you are joining us from the comfort of your homes today. Of course, we miss being in community together. We miss the smiles, the hellos, the handshakes and hugs. But church, look on the bright side of a pandemic. You can stay in on a chilly autumn morning with a cup of coffee, maybe an extra hour of sleep. Still knowing that you are in the presence of God and in the company of your sisters and brothers in the faith. May worship be for us what nothing else can be. That is a softening of the edges of our doubt and our seeking. A glimpse of God's great mystery upon our innermost being. A wordless answer to the great questions of life. I'd like to thank those who participated in the virtual 2020 Crop Walk. You can still contribute a gift to Crop by sending it to Bethany Christian Church and labeling the memo line Crop Walk 2020. The Regional Assembly of the Christian Church in Nebraska was held virtually Friday evening and Saturday morning. Nine members of our church joined us via Zoom. The theme was our oneness in Christ. The entire event was an inspiration. The speakers were outstanding, a testament to what can, hap can happen in community when we gather virtually. Bethany kids and parents, your Sunday school teachers are preparing a drive-by Halloween treat for you on Saturday, October 31st from 11 to 12. You'll be receiving your postcard in the mail shortly. Look for it and we hope to see you. Our theme today is called to be a faithful, hopeful, and loving church. It's the kickoff to our 2021 ministry of giving. A healthy congregation is full of generous and gracious people centered in God's love. Let us enjoy another gift of music. Prayer is a spiritual practice. I hope you are enjoying each week 
in the Bethany Weekly and each month in our courier the spiritual practices that one of our members, Pastor Glenda, is providing us. This week, her reflection was a spiritual practice called the breath prayer. It's beautiful, meditative, relaxing. Practicing breath prayer, she says, is a simple way of being with God that invites deeper breathing and a relaxed way of being. Glenda, I'm going to use this time of prayer beginning with one of the practices that you guide us with. Relax, close your eyes, get comfortable. Breathe in deeply. Breathe out slowly. Breathe in. Breathe out. God of love, embrace me. Breathe in Jesus, healer. Breathe out, heal me. Breathe in, be still. Breathe out, and know I am God. Breathe in, live in my heart. Breathe out, giver of peace. Continue breathing during this time of prayer and reflection. We remember Mary. Mary will be giving birth shortly. We remember Jana and Ken, who are doing well after COVID-19. We remember Twyla's cousin, Vicki. Vicki is in the hospital sick with COVID-19. Vicki was our tour agent for the Holy Land and Rome archaeological pilgrimage last summer. Vicki, know that our prayers of healing and the energy of our love go out to you. We pray for Chris, who is scheduled for carpal tunnel surgery later this month. And for all of those on our prayer list in need of our thoughts of prayers, we send them out to you. Breathe in, God of love. Breathe out peace of Christ. We thank you, O oh God, that we are among your children who have been called to walk in your light. All of our potential is born out of your love. We thank you, O oh God, for the joy of participating in the ministry of Bethany Christian Church and service that we provide to the larger community and world through this community. Your concern, O oh God, for all people teaches us much about our neighbors and ourselves. And we pray, O oh God, that you will guide us in using our hands to pray and to reach out to your children in our community and in all the world. You call us, O oh God, to be faithful, to be hopeful, 
and to be loving. What better words are there to hear during a time of pandemic? To be strongly rooted in our faith and to be a light of hope to all those who are around us, especially those who are sick, those who are treating the sick, victims of the pandemic. May we be a beacon of hope to those who have lost jobs and are searching for where their next meal will come from. And above all, as the Apostle Paul says, we are called to be love. We are called to love each other as much as ourselves. Open our eyes, O God, to the hurts of the world. Direct our hands to touch those wounds with compassion. Open our ears to hear the cries in our community of racial division and empower us to work diligently for justice, equality, and a fair treatment of all people. Thank you, O oh God, for those workers in our church who are addressing our vision of ministry for 2021. Guide them with wisdom. Help them to feel passionate about this beautiful community here at Bethany Christian Church and all the ways that we can serve our neighbors around us. Yes, discipleship can be risky, but we will be strong. We will be faithful. We will be hopeful. And we will be loving. Guide us, O oh God, as we continue our journey. Amen. Good morning. Our first scripture lesson this morning <clears throat> is from Psalm 25, verses 4 through 10. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness' sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Our second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses four through seven and verse 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, 
and the greatest of these is love. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Sandy and Bruce and Mark. That was beautiful. Church, we are making a difference in the lives of people. I was visiting with a young man the other day who struggles with drug addiction and some mental health issues. Both are something that this young man was born with and has struggled with for some time. He's my friend of six years. The streets are sometimes his home. We sit for coffee and talk a couple times each month. This week during one of our visits, I asked, why do you keep coming back here? Back to talk with me. Back to this church. What do you find here? that you do not find in any other place, I asked him. His answer was, goodness. I find goodness here. Here I'm not judged. Here I've always felt that I've been accepted. And even though I struggle with drugs, he said, I'm treated like any other person, and I know I'm loved. Church, we are making a difference in the lives of people. A family comes to our door needing to put food on the table. You know, it's hard in these days to make a paycheck stretch until the end of the month, especially if one is living on minimum wage. And when there are five or six mouths to feed around one table, Sometimes people must choose between filling the car up with gas to make it to work one more day or paying a utility bill or rent and eating a meal. This story is far too common here. Many, our Northeast Food Pantry director is here filling food orders each week for people who don't have enough food on the table. 
It's not a lavish meal, but people are so gracious and happy when they receive their orders of food. You know, that delicious can of peaches and pears, that can of spaghetti O's, sometimes with meatballs in it, a can of beef stew, instant potatoes, pork and beans, rice, you get the picture. Church, we are making a difference in the lives of people. In August, we had a collection of school supplies from our members to provide for teachers to hand out to students who didn't have money enough to purchase them. That was at Norwood Park Elementary. At Christmas time, every year, we have a drive to collect winter apparel for children at Mickle Middle School. One year it was shoes for children at Arnold Elementary School. And one of our members was so generous and gracious that he provided a new pair of shoes for each child in one of our teacher's classrooms. At Christmas, we adopt families, a few families, you know, to make their holidays a little bit happier. Gifts for children and for mom and dad, plus a Christmas dinner. I was especially moved a few years ago when one of our families was so happy to have Christmas with gifts and food, some items that they really wanted. One of the children was a student at Northeast High School. They didn't have a home, only a bed at the city mission. Church, we are making a difference in the lives of people. Engaging in ministry together to serve people in our community is the way that we participate in the amazing work that God is doing here in our midst, here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Our finance chair, Tiffany, is here this morning and will share with you our 2021 Ministry of Giving theme, Faithful, Hopeful, and Loving. In today's scripture reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Apostle Paul says, Now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. Well, this is a familiar passage of Scripture for those of us who've grown up our lives in the church. And I think we probably go back to those, those times uh, when we have wedding services, you know, and when we see the beautiful wedding dresses, the brides, the tuxedos with the groom and his wedding uh, party, the unity candle, and it's often heard in the context of the liturgy that we use at a wedding. Tiffany, I remember that day when you and Jay stood up here in the chancel area and you held hands and you spoke the most powerful words that two people can speak to each other, and that is you took your wedding vows. Wow, that was a little while ago, not too long, but a little while ago. And a lot of things have happened since that time. And I want to say to you that I am so proud of you and Jay and your family now. And I'm so proud of your commitment and service to the ministry of Bethany Christian Church and in the wider community. Church, what does it mean to be a faithful church? What does it mean to be a hopeful church? What does it mean to be a loving church? We're going to explore these themes during the next three weeks. We gather here together. The COVID-19 pandemic will not stop us from being a generous and grateful people. Jesus modeled for us that way of life, a way of life that was generous and gracious gracious with our time and our talent and our gifts in good times and even in bad times. 
Story after story in the New Testament reflects the generosity of the one that we follow, his way, Jesus of Nazareth. And times in the first century, during the the Roman Empire occupation of his land, times were not so good. Generosity is a matter of the heart and the attitude. Jesus had a good heart. Jesus always, as we read the stories, had a good attitude. People were drawn to this man and they followed him because Jesus had a faithful, hopeful, and loving heart. And living as disciples of Jesus involves being transformed into his image, followers of his way, to possessing a faithful, hopeful, and loving heart. When we read the letter called 1 Corinthians in its entirety, we find that we are dealing with a church in conflict. Corinth, which is located in now the uh, present uh, country, uh, northern Greece. Corinth was uh, a wealthy city, and it was quite popular, and it indulged in many lifestyles. Its people had many beliefs and many Roman gods or Greek gods they followed. They were in a struggle with each other, this little congregation in Corinth that was probably founded around 50 AD, one of Paul's earliest churches. Not everything was right in their heart and in their attitude with each other. Paul goes to Corinth because there is a pastoral crisis in this church that he founded. In the lesson from chapters 13, uh, from, in the lesson from chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, Paul describes love in ways uh, that he relates to uh, in the entirety of this of this letter. Paul says in verse 4 of chapter 13, love does not envy. But envy, as we read in chapter 3 of this letter, seems to characterize the Corinthian congregation. He says in verse 4, love does not boast. Yet if we read in chapter 4 and in some other places, chapter 5, the Corinthians will boast about their own gifts, seeking recognition for themselves only. In verse 4 of chapter 13, we read, love is not puffed up. Love does not boast. But as we read in chapter 4, the Corinthians are a very boastful people. They jockey for positions within this new church that Paul founded. In his pastoral role, Paul addresses the heart and the attitude of the people in Corinth. And he commands that they practice the highest gift, and that is love. Paul says, Now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Paul says love is not shameful. Love is not self-seeking. Love does not delight in the practice of injustice, but it rejoices in the truth. If those within the church 
do not do what they do in a spirit of love, then all religious talk, all knowledge, and all sacrificial giving add up to nothing. Without love, Christians are like the salt that Jesus described in the Gospel of Matthew as having lost its savor, and it's not good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled upon. Love. Practice love, Paul says. As we work together to follow Jesus as church, as we grow in our relationship with God as individuals moving toward a place of love, amazing and transformative things can happen and will happen and are happening among us. Through our giving, our lives are impacted. Through our giving, we experience transformation and change taking place within ourselves, a closer connection with God. And through our gifts, a difference is made far beyond the walls of our church. Church. Let us be called to be faithful. Let us be called to be a people who are hopeful, especially in this time of a pandemic. Church, let us feel called to practice the way of love. Good morning. I am Tiffany Baum, Chair of the Finance Committee, and I am so glad I get the chance to speak with you all today about our upcoming stewardship campaign. This is the first time I've had to put on something other than yoga pants and a hoodie in quite a while, so this is pretty exciting for me. In these challenging times, it is easy to focus on all the things that we have lost. For my family, like many, the list is long. Get-togethers with family and friends, our 15-year wedding anniversary trip, swim lessons, our annual family vacation, sleepovers at grandma's, our cubicles and coworkers, playing puzzles with Debbie in the nursery, worshiping with our church family. But this is also a time of tremendous opportunity and transformation for us as individuals, a congregation, and an entire global community. For this year's campaign, we have chosen the theme, Faithful, Hopeful, Loving. We will emphasize this theme over the next three Sundays with a guest speaker who will focus on one portion of the theme each week. Next Sunday, we will get to hear about an experience of being faithful as we transitioned to worshiping online. On November 1st, we will hear about the work that has continued here at Bethany to remain hopeful that we will return to worship when the time is right. Lastly, on November 8th, the emphasis will be on loving and how this congregation continues to support the community and those in need. This week, you will all receive your stewardship packet from the Finance Committee. In the packet, you will find a letter from the committee which further explains the theme of this year's Ministry of Giving campaign and the details of the proposed 2021 budget. It also provides a chance to respond to God's invitation to bring our best to this community through giving. Please prayerfully consider how you may respond to this invitation by completing the pledge card with your financial commitment for the upcoming year. 
You can then either drop these cards off at the church office Monday through Thursday between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., or you can slap a stamp on the provided envelope and return it through the mail. For those with children in your home, we have a new treat this year. There is a special pledge card included for them to complete with age-appropriate ways that they can give to the church both financially or not. Finally, as a keepsake for you, we have included a bookmark with the faithful, hopeful, loving theme. You can place this bookmark in your Bible, the book you are currently reading right now, your fridge, your bathroom mirror, or wherever you'll see it every day. We want to remind you that no matter what you are able to give, always remain faithful, hopeful, and loving in whatever you do. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you today. I look forward to the time when we can all be together again. Together, we can beat this, but by being selfish, we cannot. Let us remember to be faithful, hopeful, and loving. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Jesus taught us that there is no greater love than to give your life for others. Through the bread and cup of communion, we remember that Jesus gave himself for others and for us in so many different ways. As we join together around this table and around the tables in our homes, we remember and pledge to give of ourselves to others in the way that God has graciously called us to give. Around this table and around our tables at home, we join together as one people in community with brothers and sisters around the world. Through this bread, through this cup, we remember Jesus' love and we receive Jesus' love that we may love others in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Pour out your blessing, God of grace, God of mercy, your blessing on these gifts of bread and cup. As we remember the life of Jesus through the sharing of this meal, guide us in showing kindness, grace, and forgiveness to all people we pray in the name of Jesus, the one who enlightens the way for us. Amen. And now we remember when Jesus was gathered around the table with his disciples in an upper room in the city of Jerusalem. It would be the last supper he would share with his friends. Around that meal, Jesus took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat this bread. This bread is my body. I am giving to you. Do this then in remembrance of me. Then Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks for it gave it to his disciples and said, take drink from this cup, all of you. This cup holds my life, and my life I pour out for you and for the world. And every time that you gather and drink from this cup, do so 
for the remembrance of him. And now we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We thank you for joining us today for worship. We send with you blessing as we continue on the journey being called to be faithful and hopeful and loving. Stay well, stay safe. Go with the peace of Christ and the love of God. Amen.